Morning, all. Um, thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. I think there's probably some exciting different time differences, but it's what, nine o'clock in the UK on another grey day. Um, uh, thank you very much for coming, sir. My name is Richard Alwyn, and I'm the, the course leader on the MA here in Ethnographic and Documentary Filmmaking at UCL. And Mark, who just interjected with a lovely cough on my right as I'm looking at just in the Sorry about that. Um, is co-pilot and uh, one of the, the, the tutors and leads the doc fiction studio, more of which later, uh, which is an integral part of the, the course here. Um, so I, we're, we're going to talk briefly about ourselves and the course, and then show you a short film, uh, which was made on the course last year, I think. Um, it's just one of the the, the, the short films which is made, not a graduation film, just as a sort of talking point really and to get a sort of sight of some of the sort of work that's done here. And then mainly this is an opportunity for you to, to, to quiz us and ask us what you might want to know about, about the course and about um, coming to, to UCL next year, if that's your intention. Um, so I've, um, the first thing to say is that everybody who teaches on this course is a, is a filmmaker, active filmmaker. Um, uh, I've been a filmmaker for, for longer than I'm going to share with you, but I've been, I've been working here for the last couple of years full time, but I've had involvement here um, for several years because there's always been a culture here of involving filmmakers in the teaching and mentoring of students. Of students. And so I, and I think Mark as well, in, the, in years gone by, have mentored students through their graduation films, which are the sort of centerpiece of the film work which they do when they're here. Um, but um, things here have sort of changed a bit over the years, and now myself, and Mark, and other people here have full-time or some some part-time, but permanent positions teaching film alongside um, of filmmaking. Um, my particular background was slightly circuitous and wobbly, and that I started off actually read French at university and was in a, was a slightly um, tragic the obsessed francophile who who had a sort of bizarre clinical obsession with French cinema and embarked on writing a PhD about a French filmmaker which I then um, discovered that my interest wasn't in writing about French filmmakers but in trying to make films myself um, and so the the PhD was unfinished and was taken ceremoniously to a dump in London a few years ago actually having been the victim of a flood um, but I am um, uh, the only reason to tell you that is that is that everybody here is is more of a practitioner than a theoretician. You know, our purpose is to teach you practically, share with you practically ways of making films, ways of making non-fiction films. That's what we're doing, and we're all as I say filmmakers. We're not anthropologists. It's within the anthropology department, um, partly historically, but partly because there's a very close bond between uh, the sort of practice of ethnography and anthropology and the practice of making films um, in the real world um uh, but as i say we're, we're we're filmmakers not theoreticians not academics although the course is, in, is embedded obviously in the university and in the anthropology department um i'll tell you a little bit about the 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 course um most of which i, I won't spend a lot of time on this because most of this you'll be able to sort of pick out from the from the website but as you know for most of you not everybody, it's a full-time course. You can do it over two years, but it's a full-time one-year course. It's very practical and it's very intense in the sense that, that um, you're always doing stuff. You're always making things principally. Um, the course is structured around two main teaching terms. Um, and in each term, there's a, there's a, it builds towards you making a short film, a seven to 10 minute film, I believe it is in term one and in term two, each to a very different brief. And the point of that being to try and encourage you to uh, use different ways of filmmaking, different ways of storytelling, um, to sort of stretch your muscles, as it were, with different uh, you know options and elements of filmmaking that are available to you. So for this this year, for example, it's slightly different in dot fiction. Um, uh, in the first term, the brief was to make a film. Um, in the present tense, based on a character. So how do we go out into the world and encounter things which are happening in front of us and meet people and reveal their worlds to us? And in the second term, it's a, there's actually a much freer brief in which uh, is much more about being much more sort of um, formally uh, adventurous and not being so anchored in the practice of observation and interview. Um, uh, so you'd be calling on other, 
other aspects of film language like archive or narration or whatever indeed you want. So you end up testing yourself and discovering hopefully the, the filmmaking that you enjoy most um, because at the heart of it is the, is the mission in a sense, is to help you to find your voice as filmmakers. We're not here to sort of teach you any particular recipe. This is not the sort of the Netflix school of documentary making or indeed the, the Tate Modern Gallery ex, um, school of filmmaking. It's very much us trying to for help you to find what you the language that you want to use to reveal what you're interested in the world through film. So say it's very intense, there's quite a lot of self-learning in it, um, inevitably. Um, there's quite a lot of teaching as well, they have quite a lot of contact, there's about to, uh, up to two and a half days a week with, with us, with an edit tutor or with the, the, the film tutors. Um, but inevitably, you know, you you learn to make films by making films. And so we can, we can talk to you about films and we can show you films and we can think together about how they've been made and analyze them. But at the end of the day, it's for you to pick up your uh, equipment and to make your own sort of adventures into the world. And it's that, that is where you learn ultimately. Um, you're all divided into, into, into studios when you come here. So although it's quite a large cohort, though it varies from year to year, I think next year, the year we're talking about, there might be about 70 to 80 students, but they're separated into different studios. So, and each studio has its own dedicated tutor who's a filmmaker. So you'll be with a group of about 15 to 16 students usually um, throughout the year. And you make, let's say, these two films, one in term one, one in term two. And then across, usually starting around now, actually in term two, but across term three and through the summer until late summer, you're making your graduation film, which is the sort of centerpiece of your portfolio of work here, if you like. And that's a, that's a longer, larger film um, between 18 and, and 30 minutes. And for that, you're mentored. So you have a kind of close sort of producing relationship with a filmmaker or it could be a film editor or a producer, someone who's working in the industry here in the UK, or it could be one of your, your tutors. And that's the film that you want to make. It's the film of your choice, the subject matter and form, as long as it's been agreed by your tutor and your mentor. Um, and you work on that throughout the summer. Um, you work with equipment which you get given from, from day one. Uh, it's yours for the year um, to look after. So there's no sort of complicated booking in and out system, um, which I think is... It seems like a detail, but it's quite important because it means, you know, you can, a bit like being given a musical instrument, you can pick it up whenever you want. Um, and the more you practice, and the more you play with it, and the more you explore with it, the more confident you'll get. Um, and the, the, the faster you'll progress into your life as filmmakers. Um, you also, um, so you've got these these um, two films, one in term one, one in term two, you have the graduation project. Um, you uh, have a series of screenings and masterclasses through the year. So every week, on a, it's usually, I don't know if it'll be the same next year, but it's usually on a Tuesday evening, we have a screening uh, after, you know, after hours. And that's uh, uh, associated with a masterclass on the Thursday in which people come in to talk about their work. And um, we're fortunate, obviously, being in London, which is a, you know, a, a centre of film culture and making and that we can call on quite a lot of people who, who come in um, to, to share their work with you. Um, and the other thing that you do within the course is you do two optional modules, because um, the, the course itself is sort of based around a, a system of credits. You get 90 credits, I think it is, for your graduation film, and 90 credits, uh, they have 90 credits, there's 180 in total, uh, shared between the, the two films in term one and term two, that's 60 credits, and then there's 15 credits each for two other optional modules that you take, which have come from a sort of diet of modules which are offered to you by the anthropology department, but also anywhere else in the university. So you can you can you can stay close to documentary film if you wish. And for example, there's usually a course being offered on the history of uh, of documentaries. I think there's one on the history of world cinema and aesthetics of documentary. There's one, I think, on broadcast radio, which is another practical one. Or you can stroll off anywhere else into the university. As long as it, as long as it doesn't clash with your timetable and the, the tutors are happy with it, you can find a module anywhere else in the university. Um, but mainly people stick within the anthropology department, mainly with the ones which are closest to documentary making. But you can, as I say, sort of stretch your wings and go further afield, if you so wish. Um, 
if you do this course part time, if that's of interest to any of you, then all that means is that you make your graduation film in the second year. Um, and if you wish, you can do the two modules in the second year. But in the first year, you'd have to do what's called the core module, which is the film in term one and the film in term two. So if there are people who are interested in doing it part time, do the film in term one and film in term two in the first year, and then you sort of part company and return the following uh, year in what would be term two um, or term one if you're doing the modules to make your graduation film. And people who want to work part time uh, often do that. Um, and you're still involved in the other studio activities and you still come to master classes and, uh, and screenings. So it's not an entirely sort of brutal separation. Um, and these studios also, um, although uh, they're, sort of, they're, they're led by different people. There's also sort of synergy between them. Obviously, everybody's following the same map, if, even if it's, it won't be identical. If you're in a studio with me, I might be showing you, you know, a couple of films one week to discuss, and somebody else might be showing you a couple of different films in another studio, but we'll all be discussing the same thing. It's just that they might choose slightly different examples. But there is interaction between these studios. We bring you together on time on occasions to do sort of uh, exercises together. Um, but we'll also, you also obviously come together during the screenings and the masterclasses. So there's quite a large cohort body of people that you that you study with here and that you get to know and hopefully make sort of lasting friendships come working relationships. And there's certainly um, here we've got, in fact, there's a woman here who's teaching here this year, film editor, who's teaching editing here this year, who was a graduate of this course several years ago. And she's just been working on and made a film which has been very successful with another um, alumni from, her, from the same year. So people do form these sort of partnerships because it's worth underlying that, underlining that, you know, documentary is usually a collaborative act and those, uh, those relationships are really important. Um, the other thing to say before, which leads me to Mark, is that there are two of these studios, there are two sort of pathways. They're not mathematically equal in terms of the numbers, but we have the, most of the studios are what we refer to simply as the ethnographic and documentary film studios. So they're there um, to introduce you to and to help you to make documentary um, in, its, in its widest sort of sense, as I say, there's no, there's no recipe, um, but they aren't, although they're, they're, they admit experiment, and encourage experiments and say we're encouraging you to find your voice that they're distinct from one other studio there'll be one studio next year which mark runs it's called the doc fiction studio which i'll let mark describe otherwise i'll get it i'll just i risk describing it in a, inappropriately but um most students sit within the ethnographic and documentary uh, studios but for those who, who know that they have an interest in the sort of films that mark will talk to you about they might apply to um, to be in the doc fiction studio, but there's only one doc fiction studio. So there'd be sort of six, 15, 16, 17, I don't know, students who follow that path and, and the, the vast majority remain in the, in the ethnographic and documentary fiction uh, studios. Having said that, it's, it's, not as, it's not as sort of radically different as it sounds in the sense that within the ethnographic and documentary film studios, to so say you are, you're at liberty to push to the edges as much as you wish. You know, it's just that we we don't willfully set out with a sort of mission to um, to introduce elements of fiction in the way that Mark would do in, in the doc fiction studio, but we'd nor do we exclude it. If if halfway through the course you thought, what I really need to do is to sort of disturb the reality of some filming in a in a sort of quasi fictional way, no one's going to say, no, you can't do that. That's what he does. Uh, you'll be a you'll you'll be encouraged to do what you want to do. But if you specifically know that you want to go down this particular path of filmmaking that Mark is interested in, then you should um, consider that first. Um, I think that's as much as I can stand of my own voice. So maybe I should um, pass you on to Mark for a moment. Mine will probably be short. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Um, thanks for showing up so early. Um, yeah, so the doc fiction pathway is I decided to set up a couple of years ago. Um, I think for two reasons, really. One was in a response to <clears throat> the way that um, nonfiction filmmaking or so-called nonfiction filmmaking has um, really sort of 
grown in different directions in the um in the world outside in the in the real world of um documentary filmmaking festivals um on tv and in cinema and elsewhere um the it's become sort of harder and harder to i think to define what a documentary is and you can really feel that in the um in the work being done in, in the world and there's films that you watch in which you think you've been watching a straight documentary and you realize at some point in the narrative that things aren't quite as they seem and the filmmakers have introduced fictitious um, elements into the process or, or quite serious interventions and to be honest you know it's not really a new thing I think that it's just grown substantially over the years as people's perceptions of what it means to film reality has changed so like some of the earliest um, so-called documentaries were very um, fictitious and it required a lot of filmmaker intervention in ways that go against any notion of sort of capturing a pure reality as it were so so I thought it'd be really interesting to have a course that is is neither straight documentary or straight fiction and it's certainly in the documentary fiction studio you know you're not making conventional fiction films we don't use um actors and actresses you know the means and resources are exactly the same as the other studio so you're working with your very small little camera i mean we have tripods and some lights but um it's very very um um kind of low key um you know you have to work within the sort of limitations of what's available to you the other reason why i wanted to set up the um the the pathways because um in my own work i've i mean i've always kind of intervened in the process to a certain extent but more recently i've um moved towards um introducing more fictitious elements into my own work so i thought it would be interesting to to start a course um to have students that wanted to explore this this way of working um and to share my own experiences as i'm doing it um with the students um and to provoke discussions and, and thought about what the possibility of this form of filmmaking is um that all might sound a little bit abstract but in essence um the way it differs from the other pathway is that we start thinking about these interventions um from the very beginning so let's say you met a character that you were really interested in 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 the um edf um pathway um, from the very beginning in the documentary fiction path where we might be thinking about okay well, what's going on in their real life and what might you do to um, conceptualize things slightly differently add something to the situation that could reveal something um, in your film in, a, in another way that wouldn't be happening unless you made that specific intervention um, and really it's a question of sort of degrees because in any form of filmmaking I mean, the act of filmmaking is an intervention in itself so it's not so so different but it's really a, an act of sort of extremes really some people intervene very little um and want things to feel very naturalistic i mean we're about to watch an example of a film that was made within the ethnographic documentary film pathway you know where if you when you see it you can really think about the way the filmmakers set up certain shots and ask the character to do certain things in order that they can get that shot in the way they want to get it um so in some ways there's not a great deal of difference in other ways there can be a huge amount of difference depending on you and what you want to do with the people you find it requires i would say um um a greater a uh, greater deal of collaboration with your with the people you want to film in some ways because you probably f have discussions with them very early on when you're thinking about your film one and film two um about the way that you want to work so for example if you're interested in a character um, for your film you, you can explain that you want to slightly fictionalize some of their reality or you want to introduce things into the story that aren't necessarily naturally there um so the conversation in the research process um and the development of your idea might be slightly different from the other studio but not always because sometimes the interventions can be quite small 
so there's no sort of hard and fast rules about how we do things. Um, we watch a lot of uh, film work that I would describe as um, documentary fiction. I'm about to show the students after this a film from 1957 that was probably what influenced Richard and the New Wave, <laughs> um, made in in Niger in Niger, and um, you know even that long ago the the filmmaker was inviting and collaborating with real people to fictionalize their own their own lives um so as i say it's not a new development but i think that what is interesting in the world of documentary film at the moment is the in, is the different avenues in which it's sort of going down um and it just you know for you as students can introduce you to um to thinking about different ways of making film um the structure of the course is, is essentially the same as the other studios. We do a film one in term one and a film two in term two. And you have your graduation film and you have a have a, have a mentor that you work with. Um, I guess in the documentary fiction film studio, one of your mentors could be um, somebody who's a writer. Um, I've made a couple of films recently, one which I'm just finishing where I've been working with um, a colleague that I met when I was teaching at another university who's a screenwriter. and the way that we've been working together is that, you know, he um, sometimes we write words for the characters, these real people to say other times they say their own words or they improvise. But there's a process of writing that goes on that's that's slightly different to sort of, let's say, normal documentary. Um, and we have, you know, you can have somebody like that as your mentor for your graduation film. Um, or as Richard said, it could be a producer or an editor or a, a working filmmaker that has an interest in this hybrid area. Um, we do lots of exercises which help you to practice um, different forms of methodology. So, you know, if you are asking somebody to do something, how do you make it feel authentic? And is authenticity what you're interested in in the first place? Because, you know, when people are filmed, they all perform to a certain extent like we do in our daily lives anyway you know I, the way I'm talking to you now is a kind of performance I'm addressing you so I have to adopt a certain persona so you can understand what I'm saying hopefully and be clear different from when I'm talking to my nine-year-old at home or whatever so we're thinking about how people perform in front of the camera and what authenticity means as well like what it means to to film something that you feel is truthful and what relationship that truthfulness has to um the real world if you like you know what that truthfulness means and does that does that idea even really exist and who's you know who judges that um so all those questions about how people perform and how you get to performance from somebody <clears throat> that you feel is interesting is something that we interrogate quite a lot through practical workshops with um well this we just done one last week with um actually it was a former student on the course who is the lead protagonist in my new film. She came in to talk to the students about the process of how we work together. And the students were sort of practicing um, with her in the room on, on getting some reactions from her and <clears throat> bringing that kind of authenticity to, to the screen. So we do a lot of practical workshops um, through the exercises. <clears throat> it's a very intense course because you learn a lot very quickly. In term one, we tend to give you the sort of foundations that you would get in the other studio of, of sort of basic documentary filmmaking so you've got something to um to build your kind of um interventions upon in the second term yeah um i hope that's um clear enough um but just to reiterate you know it it's not a studio or a, a pathway where you know you're making a, a, a glossy, um, you know, super high budget Hollywood movie, you know, because <laughs> I think people might interpret fiction in that way. It's very, very um, documentary, but with some interventions, I would say that um, push the form into a direction that you would find interesting to push it in, given the subject that you've chosen to um, interrogate. Um, have I missed anything, Richard? I think it's probably... No, I don't think so. I think the thing is that by, by whatever camp you want to put, you know, your tent in, um, we're all interested in, in making films which are sort of rooted in the real, really. And, yeah. um, and you know, 
we're in the anthropology department, which is largely dedicated to sort of understanding of what it is to be human. I think that's what we're all doing. And there are there are kind of wings to this to a certain extent. There are the purists of um, direct cinema as a movement from started in the 60s in American cinema where there'd be no intervention at all. But somebody is editing the film, obviously. So there is intervention to a certain extent, but there would be no direct intervention in terms of interviewing uh, or um, staging or asking people to do things again. Um, and that's a sort of one wing of it. And that suits certain filmmakers and certain stories and certain experiences better than others. But some, some subjects are much more difficult to access and to understand without a degree of intervention. And that could be that could be as small as an interview or a question at some point. And then the other wing of it is what Mark is talking about, which is a more um, a more direct intervention, a more direct disturbance of what is there in front of you to, uh, the, with the same ambition, it's just to sort of understand, understand the world. Um, so I don't think that, you know, that although, you know, there is a distinction between what Mark does, and it's not going to be always in line with what's happening in the other studios. There is a sort of shared um, ambition. It's just the methodology is, is slightly different. And certainly, to say, even the ethnographic and documentary film studios, there's no, there's no doctrine in there. It is not the studio of direct cinema, although we begin very much like Mark with the very basic sort of observation and, you know, how do you film a scene in the world? How do you go out there and film um, the picket lines on the, on the railway station opposite me? How do you, how do you film that in such a way? that you can compress it and go from real time to film time. Um, so we, we have these sort of foundations which are the same, it's just that in the documentary fiction, from the word go, there's this thinking that um, I'm going to intervene in some way, I'm going to introduce an element which, which takes this somewhere uh, which wouldn't happen were I just to hang around here with my camera for until uh, the end of time. So, but no, I don't think we've, don't think we've missed anything.